back, pack, back, pack, back again. Where am I going? What am I doing? Why are you running? Why are you running? Hello, my legendary children. My name is Ethan, and welcome back to my mental breakdown. How we doing? How we feeling? What's our truth today? My truth is that I like to sound good. I like to sound put together. I like to sound professional. And if you're watching this video, you would probably like to do the same thing too. So that's why this week we're gonna talk all about vocal production. I'm gonna tell you all of my tips and tricks for getting the best sounding recording vocals. And before we start, uh, just know that I am not claiming to be the best at this. I'm not claiming to know everything there is to know about recording vocals and producing vocals and mixing vocals. I'm not saying that this is the right way or the only way to record vocals. I'm just telling you the things that I like to do, the things that I've noticed work, the things that work for me, and some of the things that I've been taught by professionals in the industry. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about what you're gonna need to record vocals. I'm saying like the bare minimum of things to do this by yourself at home for the most simple, effective, process of recording. Obviously the first thing you're gonna need is a microphone. Oh my god, these Blue Jays are just relentless. Now choosing what microphone you're gonna use is gonna depend on a lot of things. First of all, your budget. <laughs> That's a really big thing. Because you could spend thousands of dollars on a great microphone, or you can get one for around one to two hundred dollars that's gonna do the same thing. Probably not going to sound that different to the average listener. It's also gonna depend on the singer's voice. Some microphones are brighter than others, some microphones are better at picking up high end, some are better at picking up low end. For a brighter voice like a female's voice, you're gonna want a flatter microphone and for a lower singer's voice or a male's voice you're gonna want a brighter microphone it's also gonna depend on the space that you're in and what types of recordings you're gonna be doing if you're in a well-controlled space that you can isolate the sound not gonna be much echo or resonance or reverberation in the room best thing you could possibly use is a condenser I use a blue baby bottle I also have the studio projects microphone um, and there are a lot of other really 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 great condenser mics for a variety of prices and if you're gonna be in a wider more echoey space or you're doing like live recordings in a room with a full band or something like that you're gonna want to use a dynamic microphone, like an SM58, or... Why am I blanking on literally every other dynamic microphone? Next thing you're gonna need is an interface. Basically the job of an interface is to connect the microphone to your computer so then you can record the audio into your computer. A really popular one is a Scarlett 2i2. It's the little red box thing. There's one back here. Back here. Back here. There. 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 I also have an SSL 2 Plus. There are a lot of really great ones out there for a variety of prices. But with microphones and interfaces. Interfaces? Interface I? Inter... Interfoss... Inter... In but the biggest thing with all of this equipment and any equipment you buy whatsoever, do your research, find the thing that works best for what you specifically need. Because there really is no one-size-fits-all piece of equipment. God, I don't... And the last thing you're gonna need is some plugins. Compression, delay, reverb, maybe a de-esser, most of which will come with whatever recording software you're using, whether it's Logic, Pro Tools, Reaper, whatever you're using. There's no need to right away dish out a ton of money on plugins because there are some great ones built right into these software. I've talked about that before on this channel. Okay, <clears throat> now we're gonna talk about mic placement. Let me, let me, let me, let me do that. Okay. So, get, put, get. Get this away from me. Titan, please. Thank you. So this is a Blue Baby bottle. It's a condenser mic. And this is what I do the majority of my vocal recordings on. And a lot of people think that you have to have this like ridiculous vocal booth in a soundproof room to get good sounding vocal recordings. And that's not really the case at all. This has a really crazy shadow on me. Okay, that's better. A lot of times what I do, since I'm in a treated room, and by treated I mean there's like, there's foam on the walls, there's carpet on the floor, I have like a big futon mattress in the corner, and I have like cloth tapestries all over the walls, and there's lots of other stuff in the room that's gonna absorb the extra sound. So a lot of times I will literally just plop this down in the middle of the room away from any walls or surfaces that sound <laughs> away from any walls or surfaces that the sound's going to reflect off of and I'll sit in a chair and record vocals with my computer next to me so I can engineer while I'm recording because I'm usually doing this by myself I also do have a little vocal booth in the corner basically I took a corner of the room lined it with foam then I put the mic right in that corner and it has dampening materials all around it to isolate the sound but you can do that in a closet with pillows blankets sweaters I'm assuming that a lot of you watching this video for advice are gonna be recording right in your bedroom. You probably have a bed, you might have a couch, you probably have a closet full of clothes, so there's already a good bit in there that's gonna absorb excess sound. Go down to Home Depot and get a pack of moving blankets, or even some old quilts or blankets that you have lying around. Put them on the wall, put them on the ceiling, put some pillows on the floor, and that's gonna do a fantastic job of dampening the room, getting rid of that excess sound that you don't want in your recording. So the next thing that you're gonna to wanna to make sure you do is set your levels. I tend to set them as high as they can possibly go, without anything peaking and without getting
having too much hum or hiss or extra noise bleeding in. Unless you have like a perfect setup, probably gonna get some extra noise, which isn't that big of a deal. And remember that everything is gonna be compressed and processed later anyway. So if something's a little bit quieter, something's a little bit quieter or something's a little bit louder, it's gonna even out later. Oh, also this. make sure you have a pop filter or some sort of wind screen thing because it's gonna help with a lot. Because sound of you breathing and popping your P's and B's and literally hearing the air coming in and out of your body. It's, it's, it's not cute. And also do some experimenting with the distance of the microphone from your mouth. You're obviously gonna get a more forward prominent big recording if you're closer to the mic. And you're gonna get a lighter airier vibe out of being farther away from the mic. Also gonna depend on the singer, gonna depend on the microphone itself. But experiment. Do a little experiment. And just have fun with it. I hate myself. Now that we talked about what you're gonna need and how to set it all up, let's actually record some stuff. Rolling, sound speeding. Hi, Hello. I'm gonna put this back. So, let me turn this up a little bit while I'm talking. Why is my phone going off? I'm actually gonna get my phone. <laughs> Hopefully this sounds okay on camera. So I pretty much have my normal setup for what I'm recording by myself, which is my microphone, my laptop, my interface, and my headphones. <gasps> oh my God, I can hear myself. I love when I can hear myself. It's so cool. <laughs> anyway, today I've added, today I've added this little headphone mixer that's on the wall. I would normally just run my headphones right out of my laptop, but I wanted to record the audio from the computer. So I have the computer in putting into here and then one output going to my headphones the other going to my h5 recorder which is how you can hear me right now and i hope it sounds okay so we are going to be recording some vocals for my song circles you can check out the original version up here or up here i don't really know what side it's on anymore but i'm currently in the process of remaking my first album so then i can release it on my under my new name basically just pull a taylor's version so that's what we're going to record today i already have a bunch of vocals recorded i pretty much have all of the lead track done and like some extra parts here here and there, but there's still a lot more that I need to add. A lot more that I want to add. Tea, tea, tea. Ooh, this is really good. This is mango chamomile tea. Cheers. Speaking of parts that I need to record, how I usually do things, like how I go about my process, I like to go line by line. I think it's easier to get a clean take of each line that way. Focus on one line until I get a clean take and then move to the next line. Not every take has to be perfect, but they at least have to be good because you can't fix a bad take. There's only so much you can do to fix up a take with pitch correction and compression and reverb. But with that technique, there's two ways that I would normally do it. I would either start by doing a lead track of the full song, like the main melody, the lead vocal that you're gonna hear through throughout the whole song and then go back and fill in other parts or I'll go section by section. Like I'll start with verse one, do a lead track, then fill in the rest of the parts I want for verse one, then move to the pre-chorus, then move to the chorus, then to verse two and so on. And by other parts, I mean doubles, harmonies, high octaves, low octaves, any like oohs or ahs I want to throw in there. What are those called? There's like a name for those. There's like a, like a musical name for those kinds of things. Also while I'm recording, I always have at least a bottle of water, maybe also a cup of tea, keep my throat nice and lubricated, nice and warmed up. Uh, stay hydrated. And another thing that I like to keep in mind while I'm recording is the eight bar rule, which basically means that every eight bars of the song, something should change about the arrangement, which keeps the song from getting stale. I'll use circles as an example. The first eight bars of the song are a single lead track, a single synth, and just some drums. Then we bring in a couple of doubles for vocals and a bass sound. Then we go into the chorus, which has lots of doubles and a whole variety of textures instrument wise. And then that cycle pretty much starts all over. I know it's not changing the arrangement a lot. It's just adding something or taking something away to bring in some variety. Okay, now let's actually do some recording. So I created a new track in Logic. I like to have a little bit of compression on there. Also, you're gonna have to deal with it. I'm gonna add a little bit of reverb. That's a lot of reverb. Check, check, check. Still a lot. <laughs> so here's what I have so far. I don't wanna hear it. I've been hearing the same things all of my life And it's getting kind of old, getting kind of old You need to be told to keep it to yourself and Keep in mind, these are not mixed. They're not like, they're not even like processed at all. This is literally what's coming out of my face, baby. Okay, I'm tempted to do a double here. Like, hearing the same things all of my life And it's getting kind of old, getting kind of old You need to be told to keep it to yourself I'll just play it back Getting kind of old, getting kind of old You need to be told to keep it to yourself Oh, that wasn't bad. That was actually really good. Huh. Interesting. I'm so, talented. so that means I'm gonna add one at the corresponding part of the next stanza. What is it? Gotta get it out, gotta, gotta get, get it out before I explode. Thinking this for so long, so long. And I gotta get it out, gotta get it out before I explode. That was a little flat. I'm gonna keep it and just do another one. And we'll, we'll compare them later. Get it out, gotta get it out before I explode. Gotta get it out, gotta get it out. 
that was even worse. We have two pretty decent takes, and if I like one portion of one take and another portion of another, another portion of another. If I like one portion of one take and a different portion of another, I can comp them together into one really good take. I explode. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to think anymore I try to get away, try to get away But I'm always pulled right back into it Get away, but I'm always pulled right back into it I don't even know how to act anymore I try to get away, try to get away But I'm always- Now, one lead part that I haven't recorded for this song so far The, like, third verse before the final chorus I'm tired of waiting around for you to change was that bad? I'm tired of waiting around for you to change. I'm tired of waiting around for you to change. I'm tired of waiting around for you to change. But I know you will always start again. Gotta nip it in the butt. Oh. I have this problem of like, if I sing with emotion, then I'm pitchy. But if I focus on the pitch, then I'm flat and have no emotion. But I know you will always start again. Gotta nip it in the butt or- Nope. Sometimes when you're doing a line over and over and over, you really get in your head about it. If you take like a two minute break, like I cannot describe to you how much that works. I'm letting you have control of me. Nothing anymore is just what it seems. Better knock it off. Nothing anymore is just what it seems. Oh, that's giving me like Conan Gray kind of vibes. Nothing anymore is just what it seems. Nothing anymore is just what it seems. That'll be really cool with like lots of reverb on it. Let's try some other I'm tired of waiting around for you to change. But I know you will always start again. Gotta nip it in the butt or it will never stop. We got too many props for them to all be solved. I'm done letting you have control of me. Nothing anymore is just what it seems. Better knock it off now. Well, this was so much fun. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. And like I said, if you want to hear more about my vocal mixing process, please let me know in the comments below. If you didn't know, I also make music. It's on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, all of that. The links are in the description below. I will see you in the next one. Cool.